Edinburgh. 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 So we still don't quite know how to pronounce the name of the city. As a Canadian, I would be saying Edinburgh, but I keep hearing the locals say Edinburgh. So that's what we're going to go with for the rest of our video. Well, as you can probably tell, we're not in Kansas anymore. And by Kansas, I mean Chiang Mai, Thailand. Look at what we're wearing in our winter clothes. Today, we're exploring Edinburgh for the first time. This is our first impressions video. The views of the castle are phenomenal from here. It's time to go climb up for an even better vantage point. And to get there, we are going up Granny's Green Steps. I've got myself a proper Scottish winter trapper. More like I've inherited his hat. ride and hopefully we'll get some nice views of the city. And we are moving! Ooh. We're only halfway there, we're gonna go even higher up. Are you scared? Yes, and we're not even at the top yet. Neither of us like heights at all. We're probably using up all of our courage points doing this. Oh yes, oh yes, all for the viewers, right? Ginger sightings here in Edinburgh. I fit right in. to be doing a tour with Haggis Adventures. We are up in the Scottish Highlands and we're going to be visiting some of the main sites around this area. Every time I come here, I don't know, I just always get really emotional. I can't, I can't explain it. Uh, it is a place that's very, very close to my heart. And Thrown onto the battlefield, no jokes, no humour at all, guys. This is a massive war grave where my ancestors and other people's ancestors died needlessly. So just respect it guys as you're making your way through here. Uh, it's the same as if you go over to Europe and you go to these Second World War places. Just utmost total respect. Big massive shield and a big ginger beard and long hair. Quite intimidating, eh? So guys, hi to you guys. I've just been disemboweled. Now you guys over here. Boom! I'll probably just slap it through your jugulars. So with 
one man I could have taken out eight red coat soldiers. That's why the Highlanders were known as the shock troops of the Jackets. Lots of people come here, they sing songs, they tell stories, and they remember. If you guys were to come here just after the 16th of April, all the way around this cairn, there'd be flowers and tributes and things like that. On the anniversary of the battle during the day, they bring a little piper out who's actually blind, and they bring him up here, and he stands here for 45 minutes, and he plays songs on the bagpipes for 45 minutes, the length that the battle lasted for. And I dare any of you to come and stand next to him and not cry, because I did. And it's just such an emotional thing. It's, there's just silence, and all you can hear is the pipes just playing through, and as you're just looking around, you can just imagine it happening. And it does really, really tug on your heartstrings because war is such a terrible thing. And one thing is guaranteed with war is death. Death and destruction, really, really sad. These flags here, the three lions represent the connection to England. The fleur de lis, the connection to France. And then the harp down on the left is the connection to Ireland. So to stand here with this flag right now is a massive get up you, which I think is quite cool. So this is the royal standard of King James the seventh and second. And if I had been standing on this battlefield 250 years ago and I was flying this flag, I would have been taken for treason and hung and killed. <laughs> this is pretty cool, actually. <laughs> now, another so, interesting thing that one of the Jacobite generals did, and if I had saw this being a Jacobite soldier, this would have inspired me to have courage and morale. Now, Lord George Murray, guy I mentioned earlier, he actually led a charge into the front line of the British government army, snapped his sword in two, lost his horse, came back out of the front line of the British government army, got another sword, got another horse, and led a second charge in. Now to me, that's balls. If I had been there and I saw one of my generals acting like that, I'd have been like, yeah, come on, let's go. St Andrew is a patron saint. He's also the patron saint of Russia, and he's a patron saint of Greece as well. So he's not just uh, exclusive to Scotland. So this flag is very important as well. There isn't much to actually really say about this place because it is a mystery. You still have people coming here on the winter solstice with uh, professor suits on and they all argue with one another basically. Uh, these chambers are older than the pyramids. They were built by teenagers because the life expectancy back then had only been about 30 years old. So these tombs were built by teenagers. Now you would have had a dome coming over the top as well. And as you can see, the sun is actually just setting right over there. And I believe it's either in the summer solstice or the winter solstice. The sun actually sets in an actual an alignment here. And the sunbeam comes right in this chamber. And there would have been a fire and smoke and all of us would have been sitting in here. So imagine that beam of light coming in and all of this room sort of filling up with the smoke and the light and things like that. Very, very, very spiritual. The people who come here, if they take any of the rocks from these cairns and take it back to their wherever it is they're from, bad things happen to them. So much so, people have actually come back here and replaced the rocks. So there's your disclaimer, guys. Don't take any of the rocks, man. <laughs> Don't phone me, go on Facebook, like, Dave, my arm's falling off. I did tell you not to take that <laughs> rock, so <laughs> you have been warned. After the 1715 rising, you had a rising in 1719. Spain and England, or Britain shall we say, had an alliance with one another. And then Britain null and voided that alliance. So Spain decided to play the Jacobite card. They sent 300 of their crack Spanish mountain troops Yay! to help the Highlanders. So thank you very much Spain. Woo! They went down to Elandon and Castle, which is where I'm going to be taking you guys very shortly in 19. Now, unfortunately, for the Scots and the Spanish, we were defeated. So it was another failure in the rising. So thanks for trying to help us, guys. Thank you. <laughs> so it is quite crazy to think, guys, that there was actually Spanish soldiers fighting here. That's what I was saying to you about Jacobitism not just being part of Scotland. It was a European dimension. And like I said, Bonnie Prince Charlie was offered to become King of America. So an international dimension as well. And what a beautiful place for a battle, guys. Yeah. What a beautiful place for a battle. I So today is
is day two of our tour of the Scottish Highlands. The blue skies are gone and it is rainy, cold, and the weather is just very Scottish and dramatic. So our first stop of the day is Elan Donan Castle, and that's just right behind us. Ooh. When I'm cold, you know it's really cold. Oh yeah. Bone chilling, wet and damp right now. Aside from just the impressive castle, there's also wonderful views here. So we're just warming up in a pub right now. It is really cold, damp, wet, and windy outside. So we've got tea for two and we've ordered some traditional pub fare. and all the rain because it reminds me so much of home where I grew up on, on Vancouver Island. It is super windy. Our guide Dave said this is the windiest he's ever seen it here. I bet you can barely hear me right now. Woo! tour adventure and we've had all kinds of weather on day one it was like pristine conditions sunny blue skies day two was insane howling winds rain chilly and today we have a nice overcast day and we've got great views in the back of the mountain so the snowy peak we have over in the background that is Ben Nevis and it's the highest peak in the UK it's a real treat that we can see it today because it's only visible approximately 50 days of the year. Castle, which dates back to the 13th century, so we've just been wandering around the ruins and seeing what's left of it even now. And just behind us, we have the three sisters. There's not much explaining to do, the scenery speaks for itself. Visiting the William Wallace Memorial, fans of Bray of Heart will certainly know who this is. What was interesting is that our guide actually told us that many of the scenes in Braveheart are actually historically inaccurate.
Scotland, so we've decided to go with something very typical. We are going to be eating the national dish, which is haggis. So let's go into whiskey rooms. So today's meal is all about haggis, and we are starting with haggis spring rolls. So let's see what those are like. We've had a lot of spring rolls lately in Thailand, Vietnam, different places in Southeast Asia. Never haggis. And it's also our first time trying haggis. Oh, ho, ho. Is that hot? Mm. I'm pleasantly surprised. Oh, yeah. Haggis is good, people. <laughs> yeah. Those are hot. Flavors. Delicious. I think I found myself my new favorite spring roll. Haggis spring roll. Mm -mm. So for those of you who aren't familiar with haggis, it's a savory pudding made from sheep's pluck, and that means the sheep's heart, liver, and lungs. And if that doesn't sound appetizing enough, it's wrapped in the sheep's stomach, and it also includes spices and some oats and onions. So that's what we're going to be trying. Time to cover this bad boy in some gravy. Oh my, oh my, look at that. So haggis is served with neeps and tatties, which is basically turnips and Potato. potatoes. First bite. So we've got lots of haggis here. Neeps and tatties. Lots of gravy. That's awesome. Yeah? Yeah. That is not an acquired taste. I love it. Very first bite. You like it as much as I do? It's a really nice, rich winter dish. Like, normally, I don't like organs. I've had liver before and it has a very strong flavor, but somehow, when it's all mixed together and they add the spices and the gravy, it's perfect. I like it. I like haggis. <laughs> and it's a cold day today, so I'm trying something else pretty Scottish here. A nice warm drink. It's called a hot toddy. It's got hot water, whiskey, lemon, and honey. And that sounds good to me. Take a sip. Yeah, it goes down nice. Yeah, I want to try it too. Okay, first sip of the hot toddy. I'm not sure I've ever even tried this too, so let's see how it is in a hot drink. It's nice, it really warms you up, but it's not as strong and overpowering as I thought it would be. This is nice. It's also very aromatic because they put some cloves in the lemon. I think it's like Christmas. <laughs> so far, you're liking Scottish yeah. food. Sam. Sam, how you doing, man? This I'm is a great. clamshell. We're doing a deep fried Snickers, a Twix, and we've got yourself the Mars bar already. We've already got the Mars bar over there. Yeah, of course. Awesome. Yeah, All you do is just unwrap it. Stick it in the batter. I can't tell you that because that's my secret. <laughs> a secret recipe. Of course. <laughs> the Twix. One, two. Mix it around. Just mix it around. Give it a little shake. And voila, there it goes. Oh, that looks good. And then we'll go for the Twix. Here's the Twix. The Twix. There you go. Come on. Almost just the same, so. And how long do you uh, put them in there? Um, we'll just keep it until about two, three minutes. 
and it's been until like was this for the we have to buy the set. Yeah, yeah. Because we sold so many. Yeah. And this is just for the Mars bars. This is just for the Mars bars no, only. This is for the Mars bars only. Oh, um, awesome. So the temperature this is a it's 170 degrees, and um, while the batter cooks, the chocolate will melt. So the batter will cook before the chocolate melts. Oh. So it kind of got that contrast to keep the chocolate tight. That's so cool. Yeah. So we've been hearing lots about the Mars bar, but Sam here went overboard and tried three different chocolate bars that have been deep fried. So well, what do you have? Well, at the recommendation of the guy at the chip shop, he recommended I also try the Snickers and the Twix bar. So we've got it all right Ooh, in here. Let's unwrap that. Okay. I don't want to drop it here. Okay. Let's that. see that thing of beauty. Isn't that <laughs> gorgeous? All right, so which is which? So I believe this is the Snickers. Okay. We've got the two Twixes here, uh -huh. and that's the Mars bar. All right. And you're feeling a little queasy today, uh -huh. so I'm going to be the one trying them all. Yes, you are. All right. Enjoy. So first up, and you can tell they they really feel as though they've been you know deep fried and melted. Like this is they're all gooey. This is flimsy in the hand. Yeah. So yeah, this is the Mars bar. I can tell from the okay, what's seeping out. Oh, wow. <laughs> that is so much better than just having it on its own. It's all melted inside. Gooey it's shows. gooey. And you've got the crispiness mm. from the batter on the outside. Mm. One more bite. Okay, next up, Twix. So next we got the Twix. This one's a little longer. Mm. Oh, wow. Is it still crunchy? Yeah. It's still crunchy on the inside, you can see this. All the chocolate is melted from the outside. <laughs> it's just so much better than having it normally. And the best for last. Best for last. My favorite of all these bars is the Snickers, so I have high expectations for the deep fried version here. The battered version. It just melts all the caramel and the chocolate inside and the peanuts. Oh. Let's see the inside of it. Hold it steady. Ooh. That is amazing. Okay, so you've tried all three. Which was your favorite? Definitely the Snickers. Why? Because I love Snickers bars and this just enhanced it. <laughs> so it's not surprising that taking something that's already unhealthy can make it even unhealthier, would make it taste better. So this afternoon we are going to be doing a little bit of a taste test. So we raided a Scottish supermarket and picked out some items that we thought looked very local. So we're going to try those and see what they're like. Yeah, overall we've got five different things. Two beverages and three things to eat. So first up, I'm going to be trying something called Urn Brew, and apparently after whiskey, this is Scotland's second national drink. And it looks like a regular fizzy drink. It kind of looks like it could be orange flavored, but I hear it's just sweet and it doesn't really taste like fruit. Oh, well, I'm gonna need help opening this. <laughs> yeah. Thank you kindly. So it smells very sweet and sugary. It doesn't smell like orange. <laughs> it's a bit like cream soda maybe. It's just really, really sweet, like sweeter than, than Pepsi or 7-Up. Oh yeah? How is that? Yeah, it reminds me a lot of cream soda as well, which isn't my favorite beverage. So overall, I don't think I'm gonna be uh, an urn brew man anytime soon. <laughs> Next up. Next up, we've got Mackies of Scotland's haggis and cracked black pepper flavored chips. Or crisps, as we like to call them here. Right, exactly. Chips here would be referring to like French fries. So we're gonna call these crisps. Let's open these uh, up here. 
appear to be like uh, kettle style chips. Crisps, I mean, kettle style crisps. Let's try this. Mm, yeah, you can tell it has a smoky flavor. Can you taste the haggis? Mm, yeah, kind of, but I mean, it, it has more of a sort of an all dressed smoky flavor, in my opinion. I do like them. And why won't you be trying any of those delectable crisps? Mm. Well, I got really sick shortly after eating haggis, so just just the name, just the sound of haggis kind of makes my stomach turn a little bit. So I'm staying away from haggis flavored chips this time around. Which is good for me because that means I get to eat them all. I like them. Good. And what do we have here? Next up we have Krabby's. Here in the back it says that it's best served chilled with ice and lemon, but we have neither Oops. of those. Room temperature. And actually, we don't even know if this is Scottish or not, but... I think so. Let's assume... It says, <laughs> following in the pioneering footsteps of the first Scots. Well, there we go. So... And what is it? I think it's a ginger beer, isn't it? Ginger beer, okay. Alcohol with alcohol. What does that mean? <laughs> ginger beer! <laughs> That's exactly what it is. It ginger tastes very gingery? Beer. Yes. I don't love beer, so I'm not gonna say I love it, but it's it's a nice... Does it have a strong smell. ginger taste? It's like ginger, ginger tea. Tell me how you like it. Oh yeah, I like that a lot. It's got a very, uh, it's quite sweet. I mean, normally beer doesn't have this sweet of a taste, so this is a this is a nice refreshing beverage. Refreshing at room temperature. <laughs> True. And we've got butterscotch chocolate. Let's give it a go. <laughs> okay, that's upside down, but that's okay. Let's try a piece of this. Yeah, you really taste the uh, really taste the butterscotch. That is creamy and sweet and delicious. Is this milk chocolate or is it like dark bitter chocolate? No, no, it's really sweet. I love it. Kind of reminds me of dulce de leche. Dulce de leche chocolate, mm. huh? Like it then? Yeah, I do like it. I mean, normally organic chocolate isn't that great in my opinion because it's a little bitter, a bit too natural for me. This is quite nice. <laughs> she takes another bite. Hmm, so nice and sweet. It's creamy. Shortbread cookies. This is Christmas in a tin. Mmm, smells like Christmas. Oh, those look good. I can tell I'm going to like this. Nice big, thick cookies. Crispy? Mm, not crispy. Just crunchy Christmas cookies, you know. Mmm. Gonna share those? Maybe. You know, this would make a really nice souvenir, people. If you're visiting Scotland, get Scottish shortbread. Those are real good. Reminds me of my mom's shortbread cookies she used to make for me for Christmas. And I would eat a lot of those. <laughs> and last but not least, we have Tablet, which is a sweet treat that everyone has been talking about. And this is what I'm most looking forward to having. This is supposed to be very much like fudge. And so I can't wait to try it. This one's whiskey flavored. Mm -mm. Oh yeah. So I'm just going to go at this like a chocolate bar and just bite right in. It smells good. Oh wow. That is really, really, really sweet. 
Is it soft, crunchy, yep. gooey, um, chewy? It it's a little. I wouldn't call it crunchy. It kind of like crumbles in your mouth. And mm -hmm. um, yeah, I can taste a hint of the whiskey. I mean, it's not overpowering. It's more sweet than anything else, but there's definitely a hint of whiskey. It smells like cheese. <laughs> <laughs> you bite. It's the smallest nibble ever. Okay, it's sweet when you taste it, but it smells like cheese. I'm not kidding. Is that the whiskey smell? Could be, yeah. Do you like it? Do you like the taste though? Yes. <laughs> Even though I'm just nibbling at it. I'm like grazing it with my teeth. It does taste nice. Very sweet. The smell. Mm -mm. The smell doesn't do it for you. It's getting a nay from me. Okay, so favorites. What was the best thing you ate? I really like the tablet and the ginger beer the most. Why? Well, I just love to eat fudge and I like to drink beer, especially anything with ginger in it. Gingery beers? Mm -mm -mm. Mm. Okay, so my favorite I would say was the shortbread cookies. Those were really nice, reminds me of Christmas. And least favorite, I would have to say the tablet just because it smelled really bad. <laughs> like, I'm sure regular tablet is great, but the whiskey flavored one, I'm telling you, it smells like cheese. Like, go buy a pack and sniff that and come back to me. I think the thing that we both didn't like was the, uh, the urn brew. Yeah, it's, it's a bit too sweet, but terrible. I didn't like it at all. That was my <laughs> least favorite by far. Anyways, so yeah, when you come to Scotland, try out these products and try out other things and let us know what you think. And if you have any suggestions of things that we should try while we're here in Edinburgh, just leave it in the comments below. I think tomorrow we're going to be hunting for some deep fried pizza. Number one goal, right? Yeah, we just had the deep fried chocolate bars today, so... Okay, toodles! So this morning we are at the Looney Duke and it's a bit of a tradition here in Scotland that the day of New Year's people jump into the freezing waters of the Firth of Forth and it's all to raise money for charity so we're going to watch them do that. Are you going to do it? No way. There's a man wrapped in bubble wrap that nearly floated away. The rescue team picked him up in the water. So that was one of the coolest, craziest, and I must say zaniest events I've ever seen. I'm glad that I was behind the lens and didn't go into the water. Everyone looks freezing cold now.